Hello learners, I am Garima Vasthi and today we are going to talk about the advantages of activity as a method of learning over other approaches. We have already talked about what activity is, how it is used, how it is more useful in teaching. Now we are going to talk about why is it preferred by teachers over other approaches. So as you all know that activity combines three important elements of teaching learning process. So when we talk about the process of teaching and learning that is within the classroom there are three important aspects that we see. One is the teacher who is supposed to be the knowledge giver and then there are the learners who are the knowledge receivers or constructors of knowledge as we say and then there is subject integration. So all of these are combined that the teacher is taken into account, the learners are learning and the subject matter is also discussed. So all these processes are present, are combined. We have already talked that how learner-centered approaches are better. So as you all know, activity is a learner-centered approach. And when we talk about the advantages of activity, we are saying that while doing, activity means learning by doing. So the knowledge is gained or is constructed by the student while learning, while doing the activity, right? which is in his or her own environment. So the child is very comfortable because he or she is in his or her own environment and is doing activity according to their own pace. Now this approach takes into account the four essential elements which are required for learning. One is the need, right? What is the need of the child at this moment. So because the child is himself or herself doing the activity, the need is addressed. We talk about interest of the child. Children are always more interested in doing practical things, in doing practical works. So it takes the interest of the child also into consideration. So when we talk about uh, little children, we first introduce them to language through songs, through poems, that is what we do. And then slowly and steadily we move where we teach them or we introduce them to stories. We take them to different storybooks. And so a need is created, a need is there also. They also recognize that this world of books is something that we really need to know. And there is an interest in language which is generated. And then we go on the mental ability. Now the books also differ. When the child is really small or in say first or second grades, we uh, generally in first grades, we introduce them to pictorial books, we, which are called picture books. They are generally have more of illustrations and less of text. So, and as we move forward, the text increases. So that is according to the mental ability of the child. So if I take storytelling as an activity, then I will do an activity where according to the mental ability of my child. And then is social context. We do activities which are relevant to the social context of the child. They are useful to the child and they are also not very foreign for the child. Then we talk about why activity. So first is, I've already discussed this in the previous example, that activity can be in any form. It can be in the form of a game, it can be in the form of a story, role play or song. So game is generally physical games or you can play, if I take again the example of language, then we can play word games, right? We can give them different alphabets, we can jumble them and we can say that create as many words as you can. And uh, the person or the team maybe who creates the maximum number of words wins. So it's a game, it's an activity. Story I've already discussed. Role play is where children take on adult roles and they play it amongst their peer groups. And then there is song which children do in a group generally or if 
you see them alone sometimes during play field then children will be humming those songs so activity has various forms these are some of those forms activity also provides a scope for each child to participate so if I generally what we do is we teach children so if I take any instructional method say for example lecture method the most commonly used method of teaching then uh, I don't know whether my child is learning or not right uh, for me I have to take an assessment maybe written or oral and then I'll figure out I'll find out if he or she has learned something or not but activity means that every child is going to learn and every child is going to participate because in lecture method I may ask questions from some of the students it may not be possible for me to ask a particular question or discuss something which each and every child but in activity I am able to do that so every child is able to participate in an activity now an activity can be either an individual activity or a group activity in an individual activity generally the children are able to set their own pace of learning they may be able to do it on their own sometimes with your guidance or maybe you have done an activity with them once and then they want to try it again which is on their own so it can be individual or it can be a group activity where so for example a word game I can give individually some jumbled words to the child and say that create as many words as you can some letters and from that you create as many words as you can or I can say that divide yourself into groups and these are your letters create as many words as you can or some other activity there are different types of activity also so some require different point of view or some discussion so it is better at that time that I tell them that uh, this is what we need to do why don't you think about it or for example if I've just told them about a story I can stop mid-sentence and say that uh, now create your own story so one of those stories I have to give an example is that uh, every one of us, us has heard this so I'm going to use this which is that there's a race and a tortoise and a rabbit are going to be in the race and ultimately what happens is that uh, the rabbit is so overconfident that he goes to sleep and the tortoise is steady and slowly slowly he walks away and wins the race now on the other hand I may tell the children that you know they started a race and then the rabbit slept but what happened after that you may change it or they just started the race now what happened so it can create different stories which can be in a group because people have or children have different ideas uh, then when we talk about activity as a method we say that involvement and participation in each activity gives a sense of satisfaction to the student no child will feel as if he or she has been left out a little they are involved in the activity everybody is participating we've already discussed this and uh, so they are involved they are doing something with the other or sometimes they create an art piece which we called as a collaborative art piece which is that there's a huge chart paper and you give them a theme and you say that you know together you create something so everybody is able to contribute something with the other in the activity if you do it in little higher classes there are some children who will say that you know maybe my drawing is not so good so I don't want to do an art activity so you can tell them that you know maybe somebody else can draw and you can color you can fill in or do something else you can write on a chart paper so this way you are involving everybody in a particular activity and slowly and steadily their interest in that particular subject which earlier they really don't want to do is also created then we talk about the last point which is that activity is also useful in a sense that by making little changes small changes an activity can be used 
for achieving other objectives. We can use one activity multiple times. We can use it for different things. So generally what teachers do is create TLMs, which are paper TLMs, say for example, flashcards. And these are pictorial in nature. You sometimes may use them for a language activity. Sometimes you may use it for a small warm-up game. Sometimes you can use it for, say, addition, because you can, if there is A for apple, you can also say, okay, this is O for orange, and this is, say, some other fruit, S for strawberry. So how many fruits are there? You can collect, so that is maths. So one activity or can be used or one TLM can be used in different ways by making just small adjustments. So in a classroom where activity is taking place, what does this classroom look like? Now children are generally in these classes very involved in what they are doing, in the work that they are doing. And generally they are unaware if the teacher is even there or not because they're so involved in their work. So a teacher acts as a guide here or as a supervisor. He or she is monitoring what the other children are doing. So children are involved in work and the teacher goes and takes rounds and the children are not really disturbed about it. They are not really disturbed about the movements because they have a task which they have to complete. They are busy doing it. So uh, that is what a classroom looks like. Children talk amongst themselves. They are able to talk amongst themselves. And it is not the regular chitter chatter, but rather something useful, construction of knowledge, sharing of knowledge, knowledge sharing, the different processes which takes place in these classrooms. They are able to manipulate materials. When I say manipulate materials, it means that how can I use a particular object differently for different purposes. So a bottle may not be used only as a bottle. It as a bottle, we say it is used for drinking, but a child may use it in a role play as a rolling pin to make something, or the children can do something else. So they manipulate materials, they imagine that, you know, suppose this is this, and they use it accordingly. Then they try different arrangements and ways of solving a problem, which is that specifically, in systems which are Montessori based or which provide, which have a lot of blocks or other TLMs, then children try out different arrangements that are there. If from blocks a tar can be made, what else can be made? So they'll try it. They will say a seriation is happening. So they'll do an upward seriation. They'll do a vertical and a horizontal seriation or they may make a completely different house out of it. So there are different arrangements that they'll try and there will be different ways of solving a particular problem, which again is very useful because here, rather than going to the teacher or complaining to the teacher, which generally happens that, you know, ma'am, this is happening or that is happening in a class or he has taken my pencil. This won't happen if children are regularly involved in activities because they know how to solve a problem. They take on the responsibility, they take on the ownership, and they try different ways of solving a particular problem. It may be related to their peers, it may be related to the activity at hand, or if there is a lack of resource, how can we substitute it, for example. So that is done. Then children are also easily able to identify the aim and objective of the activity. That is, what are we doing and why are we doing? Generally, if you teach them from a textbook, they read a lesson maybe, then you ask them, okay, what is it? They'll be able to tell you maybe the topic at hand, like for example, unit six, food and nutrition, for example. So they know that that is the lesson, but what are you learning in food? Then they 
not everybody but yeah most of the children will be a little mum because they won't know and why are we learning about this how is it useful generally this happens in subjects like social science where children are like why are we learning this so it is important that if these things are done practically in the form of activity the children are able to know what are we doing and why are we doing it so they are able to identify the aim and objective of the activity very clearly so activity is basically bottom line is that they are engaging and they encourage students to achieve the learning objectives which are defined by the teacher or by the syllabus or curriculum but yes then is this if you can see is a classroom where there is activity it's an activity based as classroom children are doing an art activity here so you see they're sitting very closely to each other they are very near each other but they are busy doing their own work they are painting they are not talking at all very disciplined each one of them has their own trays and they are busily doing their work so this is what involvement looks like so this is what activity based classrooms are all about now concretely the advantages are that activity is already discussed also in some sense or the other but activities provide enough scope enough scope for what one a child's individual style every child and it has been recognized by our educational researchers also that every child has a unique has an individual style and pace of learning and they have different methods so activity has the scope if i am not able to understand addition in this paragraph moment i will understand it but it may take me some time and if i'm doing an activity i can do that activity slowly or i can finish it very fast but it's on my pace so the child has a space where what are they learning how are they learning that is on them sometimes that uh, you know they themselves decide what is their pace or they'll come to it so that is one then second is self learning activities provide scope for self learning where i as a child am able to create knowledge and as already told that generally if you do activities which are very low cost or no cost or from material which are from their surroundings which you should and the child will definitely go and do it again in their home environment and that is when it promotes self learning and then the next point we talk about is ability of inquiry this is a very good thing that they develop a key learning aspect which is how to inquire you know how to question and not just question but also if there's a particular thing that i'm doing then if we are doing something questions arise theoretically i may read about something say for example theoretically i read about rain water harvesting it's very easy i say that save rain water on rooftops but if i say that okay let us all come create a model then they'll say okay how is it done the rain is falling on the roof but i have to store it so i can't really store it on the roof itself so i need a tank and then maybe how does the water travel from the roof to the tank so then they come up with the ideas with a pipe or something or you tell them that generally if children are stuck that it is through a pipe and then they say okay now how do we make this pipe so there are different things which come up in their mind and which are very practical aspects of something they are able to know about their subject matter a lot better then is self assessment of knowledge rather than me as a teacher who is assessing them who is trying to say that uh, 
I saw you doing this in this activity or maybe you know if we talk about not activity then generally what happens is that you teach something and then you take a test whether it's oral whether it's written but that is what you do as a teacher we assess children but here in activity children are able to assess themselves because they have a task at hand so if they're able to complete the task they know that their work is done they're able to understand if they are not then they'll take time they may ask for your help or for the help of their friends and then they are able to create something but they are able to assess their knowledge and they're also able to construct new knowledge this is something i've already talked about in detail that children if the surroundings are familiar are able to construct new knowledge and so activity in a way is good when you're teaching them about new concepts you tell them and then you also give them something or the other which is able to help them construct knowledge rather than just be a receiver rather than just be a passive receiver they are active in their own uh, process of learning and they become involved learners and if you see this arrow going there in the last point if you become an involved learner then an involved learner has automatically an interest in learning if you are so busy doing that activity like it was in that earlier picture if you're so busy doing something you're involved in doing something then obviously it will create interest it's a pleasurable activity and it will create interest in the act of learning also for you the next advantages we talk about is that activity is able to address or achieve the four pillars of learning now what are these four pillars of learning one is learning to know learning to do learning to live together and learning to be learning to know which is we are knowing new things we are knowing new concepts we knew about tomato and now we are discovering more about tomato so we are knowing you know learning to do that is we are also learning to doing things now not just sitting but practically learning to do then we are learning to live together by live together i say activity is mostly a group work so i am working in groups i am cooperating and hence i'm learning to live together with my fellow peers with my friends with my classmates and i am learning to be learning to be as in myself i am becoming an independent learner day by day through this method now activity as discussed during this presentation is a useful approach of learning and in the process of teaching and learning and it has many advantages over other approaches but here are some others which is one it is a very useful approach for mgml classes which are multi grade multi learning classes these classes are basically uh, you may be familiar with the concept that uh, generally it happens in a single teacher school or where there are less teachers and more students so one teacher has to manage different grades different levels of students so i have generally there are three classes so i am a teacher and i have first second and third class which i have to teach now they are different curriculums different syllabuses and there are different children who have different learning needs so what do i do i am just one teacher how do i make myself available to everybody how do i make sure that every person or every child in my classes is learning so through activity if i explain an activity or children are involved in an activity then they are self learning and hence after some monitoring i can go to the other class i can go to the not the other class but rather other students and maybe i can do another activity with them and then come back and check on them or i can do something else with those students but activity is a useful approach and also i can create one activity which has three levels so a particular activity 
can be done by smaller children in a way and then there is a step two which you do when you are in grade two and then there's a step three which you do in grade three and if I don't limit myself to grades then there are some children who are in grade one but they are able to do the step two also so I'm also addressing different learning levels here this is something which is I think the central advantage of this approach then uh, we talk about different learnings which are happening during activity even if I'm doing it in group I am doing and hence there is individual learning self-learning is that maybe I do that activity afterwards or there are some lessons which during that activity I have learned I have come up with and then there is peer learning where I am not just dependent on the teacher for my learning but I also take views of my peers of my classmates then activity provides the use of multiple methods I can use different methods I may also use different activities at a time so we were talking about language classes a little earlier so we may start with a song and continue with the story so we are using the method of song in storytelling we are using multiple methods here then in this learning we are talking about several abilities which are required at the same time like the child needs to think the child needs to reason not with himself or herself but also with her or his peers and search for alternatives in case of problems respond in socially desirable ways because we are working in a group so emotional control also comes in with and that is how socially desirable ways and emotional control are also together and we learn to cooperate so a child cannot really say that I want to do this or you know I will do this but as a group they need to cooperate and hence it is important that they develop some abilities so maybe they have developed a turn-taking ability where then say okay both of you want to do this or four of you want to do this let's take turns and do this right then the child develops a holistic personality because this method ensures cognitive social emotional as discussed in the earlier point and psychomotor aspects in the children all three developments are taking place and it helps develop the holistic personality of a child now lastly uh, we conclude that activity is a goal-oriented task where we decide this is what you learn and we decide this is how you learn and once you complete that activity once you do it then you have achieved your goal and you have learned now the learner gets spontaneously involved as a teacher we don't really have to get their attention because children are eager to learn they're eager to do things so they can spontaneously involve themselves in the activities so they are involved automatically without our pressure also they derive pleasure in achieving the learning objectives what are we learning what are our learning objectives whatever they are we are likely as children to do them better because learning is fun for us now so studying is fun and we will be able to clear our concepts easily so uh, bottom line I would just like to say that in this presentation we saw what are the advantages of activity over all the other approaches and if activity as a method of teaching and learning is managed properly in the classroom then this method has several in fact numerous advantages which will facilitate students learning it will make it more contextual it will make it more relevant for them and learning takes place in a meaningful manner this is it for today we will meet again for another lecture thank you